Today's project combines applique hearts with four patch blocks. Before we get to our quilting projects, I'd like you to help me welcome back my guest. This is Annie Moody. Hi, Annie. Hi, Kay. It is great to have you back because you have such neat ideas. Well, thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, what are you going to do for us today? Well, today we're going to do a quilt that is this, this quilt here. We're going to just show you how to do one block. And basically, the machine has, we have the decorative stitches on all the sewing machines. But we've taken the decorative stitches and they're now in the embroidery area of the machine so we can actually, actually embroider out decorative stitches and arrange them on the edit screen right on the machine. Okay, so this isn't free motion. No. This is all this in is, there. It's okay. all in there. How do we start? How do we start? Well, first I'm going to set up the machine to embroider. So I'll open this arm and I'll touch my embroidery mode key. And what did that do? I heard noises. Well, what that does is it's just setting up the robotic technology that's in the arm. So, and it tells us that we need to keep hands clear. Carriage will now move into set position. So now it's all set up for embroidery. Oh, I can see why it tells you to keep your hands yeah, clear. Or your yeah. coffee cup. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, how we get started in this is we're going to go ahead and start with a blank edit screen, which is right down there. And then on our edit screen, we have choices where we can bring in embroidery designs or we can bring in some decorative stitches. So the decorative stitches are in the lettering tab. So we'll touch the lettering tab and we're going to go to font selection. And then we have several different font selections. But this normal sew right here is where a lot of our decorative stitches have been brought into the embroidery area. So from here, there's so many things you can do. That's why every block in the quilt is completely different. You can choose several different ways to embroider something. I'm trying to figure out which one I want because they're all so gorgeous. I'll just try this font here and I will just, when you hear that beep, then you know you have it filled up completely. When I touch OK, it brings that design into our edit screen. And from here, I can fully arc this, touching the arcing button. Wow. So now I can arc that and it makes a full circle. So you can just watch it do it That's right on right. screen. You can see it interact with you as you go. And you can even spread it out a little bit if you want to do that. Just so spread out as far as it'll go. And we'll say OK, that we're happy with our design. And we can continue to bring in more and more decorative stitches as, as you want to. For instance, I'll just bring in, I'll bring in this one and I'll fill up the screen. And you can, when Till you hit. <laughs> Triple till, beeps. <laughs> right, exactly. Till it yells at you to stop. Okay. And we'll press the OK button again. And you can see we have that design in a straight line again. And now we can go and fully arc it again. This time I don't think I'm going to arc it in a full circle. I'll just arc it in a half circle. You can go as far you, as you want or arc it as little as you want. And I'll say OK. And then I can move it. That was probably a little bit too far. But I can move it and then I can duplicate it and it duplicated it right on top so I can just click and drag it there and then I can do a horizontal flip and move it back up to where I want it so now I've got a little bit bigger circle. Do you spend so much time playing that you never get to the sewing? Well, you know, it is addictive, and um, I think I've decided that it's like eating popcorn. Once you start, you can't stop, so it really is addictive. But there's a lot of fun things that you can do. I'm going to just take this and center it a little bit. Now that I have the center motif all centered where I want it, I can continue to add more decorative stitches if I want to. Just go wild with it. Uh, you could. You can just <laughs> go wild with it. But I think for right now, we're just going to stitch this out so you can see how that works. Okay. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is raise the screen K, and that way it allows me to get my hoop in there a little easier. Oh, and wide open spaces. Wide open spaces. Lots of space in there. Now I'll just connect my hoop. I'll touch the OK button and that takes us to our ready to sew screen. 
And it's so simple, you just touch the start button and away it'll start stitching. I just think it's fascinating to watch this. It I is could fascinating. Just... And the decorative stitches that are in here are so beautiful and the different ways you can arrange them, you can just have so much fun playing with it. So we're getting some leaves. Yeah. And it just does its own thing, doesn't it? It does its own thing. And you can make it as elaborate as you want or as plain and simple as you want. Now, do you use any kind of interfacing or stabilizer under it? I do it? have, under here I have a cutaway inter, uh, stabilizer. Okay. You can, with this type of linen or cotton, you could use a cutaway or a tearaway, either one. Oh, just that is neat. Just keeps going with the design. Let's take a look now at your finished pillow. Now this is done in the white thread. Right. And you told me you wanted the pink so the camera could right. see it. Right, because I thought it would show up a little bit better. It wouldn't be quite as light. And this one here I've turned into a little sachet and of course has your initials on so you get to keep this. Oh, well thank you. You're welcome. But this is just another example of how you can just take all those stitches and do a lot of really fun things with it. In this case, in the center, the black fabric, what I've done is I've used it as an applique. And I had it straight stitch, and that straight stitch and a satin stitch are both in, the, in that same area that we worked in. So that did that circle automatically. Right, did the circle automatically, and I'll cut the black fabric away, and then it would stitch this black satin stitch around it. So all the work is done for us. That's right. That's well, I want to <laughs> thank you, Annie. This is really great. Perfect little stitches. I love that line. Uh, thank you very much for sharing this well, with us. thank you. It was lots of fun, Kay. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's go in now and do our four-patch hearts. Our wall hanging today has two separate blocks. We have a heart here that's appliqued onto the reverse colors, and this is what we call a rectangle square. And then we have the four patch. So let's start with the four patch, first of all. I've sewn two strips that are the same width. They're four and three quarter inches together. Then I want to press the seam allowances toward the dark fabric, and we roll our fabric to do that, which means we're going to put our iron right down on the light fabric, Hold the fabric up and roll and just press across it. Once should do it. And we want to check to make sure that we don't have any creases here or folds. Now to cut the four patch, remember I said these strips were four and three quarter inches. We're going to cut some pieces that are four and three quarters inches. So we'll put the four and three quarter inch uh, line on the ruler right on the edge of the fabric that I've already cut. And I also like to have one of the lines of the ruler on the seam line so we can really get a good square cut. And we'll just continue cutting until we have enough pieces for the four patches that we need. Then we're going to take these pieces and sew them together. And we'll put them together this way by just turning one of them upside down. Okay, and we'll fold these. And I like to interlock my seams in a uh, pattern like this. That means the top seam allowance is going this way or away from me. The bottom is going toward me. So when I sew those, it's a very easy match to do. It will just... Uh, you know, your, your presser foot on your machine will just help those lock right together. So let's sew these. I already have my starter scrap here. So I'll sew from that right on to my piece. Check when you get near the seam that they're, they are interlocking. Your finger can usually feel that when they line up. Let's make sure that we don't have our seam allowance going the wrong way there. 
Here we go. And I'm going to lock and cut my stitches. And, and this piece is loose. So right on to my starter strap, so I'm ready for my next piece. Now I need to press this. And we can press the seam allowances in either direction. We have seams going both ways. So we'll just open it up, put our iron here, bring it right across. And by interlocking our seams, you can see how they line up right here. Okay, now from this very same strip of fabric, we need to cut squares. And they're going to be the rectangle squares behind the heart shape. How do we cut squares? Well, if you measure your strip and it's 9 inches, then you can come along at 9 inches and line up your ruler and cut your square. And if your ruler is a little longer, you can do it all in one cut. But here we have our square. So we have our triangle square, and we have our four-patch square. Now we need to make our hearts. And the way we're going to do that is to take pattern tracing fabric. We're going to take the six-inch heart shape and lay it on there. Now I'm going to use a ballpoint pen to mark this so you can really see the line. But when you're doing it for your quilt, you need to use a fabric marking pencil, one that's just dark enough so you can see the stitching. And we'll just draw around the outside of the shape. And that is the heart shape that we need. Now, we have hearts that are going in two different directions. If you take a look here, we have a heart with the orange color on the, on the left, and here we have one with the yellow on the left. So what we do is to line them up on two strips of fabric. These were each cut four and a quarter inches, a little bit narrower than for our nine patch. And so we have, we'll cut two going in this direction and two going in this direction. And we need to line it up so that the inside point of the heart and the point here at the bottom are lined up right along that seam line. And put some pins in. And next we want to cut our squares right between them. Now it's time to stitch this. I'm going to change the foot on my machine. I had a quarter inch foot in on. I'm going to go to a regular presser foot. And we can start stitching. I like to start on a straight edge. Just gives me a little bit of feel for it and get some of it done before I tackle the curve. I'm just going to follow that line. Get this right under there. Now when you come to the curved edge of the heart, you might want to shorten the stitch length and whatever feels comfortable for you. And we want the needle to stop down in the fabric so when we turn it, we won't be jumping all over the place. Part of it you can get without lifting the presser foot to turn it, but for instance, the inside point, you want to start, stop right on the seam and then lift the presser foot and turn it. Pull those pieces down, come around the curve. You want to go all the way around the heart with your stitching. And again, you want to stop right at the seam. And turn and continue back to where you were. Okay, let's cut our threads. And we have our heart stitched. Now the next thing we want to do is to cut 
down the center of the heart on the tra pattern tracing fabric. Just cut anywhere in the center. That's so we can turn it right side out. Okay, we'll just get it started and stitch right down or cut right down here. Let's trim that off. Now you want to trim to about an eighth of an inch around the edge. And if you're good with a rotary cutter, you can do it. Otherwise, use your scissors. And about an eighth of an inch will let you really turn it carefully. Or turn and have a nice smooth edge. And that's what we're aiming for. That's what the applique pressing fabric will do. There, we have another piece under there. That's why it didn't want to cut smoothly. Okay. When you come to the point, you want to get down almost to your stitching. Okay, now you can turn your heart right side out, push those edges out, and then we're ready to press. And you'll have a nice smooth edge. We'll get it turned there. It takes a minute or two to get that turned, but I already I have one already finished here. So I'm going to take my rectangle that I cut, my square made out of two rectangles, and I'm going to center the heart on there. Well, how do we center a heart? Well, I have a tip for you that'll make it easy. We're going to use the ironing board, and we're going to take it and press it in half and crease it to find the center of that block. Now that crease will help us center because what we want to do with a six inch heart is to measure three inches down from the crease line and mark it with a pin. Then we take our heart and place the, this right, the point of it right at the pin lining up the center seam. Now remember when we pressed our original seams together, our strip sets, we said to press the seam allowances to the dark fabric. That really helps here because on the background fabric, the seam allowance is pressed toward the orange. And on the heart, it's also pressed to the orange. So we don't have any bulk in there. Now be sure and line up your seams. And let's put one more pin in. And now we're going to go over and applique the heart to our, tri our rectangle squares. I need to change my presser foot again. We're going to put on a decorative foot. And taking the stylus, I'm going to go here to what looks like a shirt. And that takes me to a bunch of stitches that I can select. And we're going to go to applique. And then in there, there are three stitches. I'm going to choose the blanket stitch. It tells me to use the decorative foot. I've already done that. So we're all set to go. Now, where are we going to start stitching? I find the easiest place to start here is down here at the point. So we'll do that. And you want, might want to match your thread to the heart. But what I have done is, is uh, I have a variegated thread here that has orange and yellow in it both. And so I, this time I'm going to try that. Now with a blanket stitch, you'll get three or four stitches in a row that will be on the background. Then you'll have a stitch that takes a zigzag bite in and goes back. And that's what holds the applique or the heart to the background. So we'll stitch, there we go, now keep your heart from, from moving with your fingers and just stitch along there. Now when it comes to the curve, here's where it's really important to have your needle stop down in the fabric because you want it to stop so that if you need to turn it, you're not sort of doing a zig and a zag. So 
So go as long as you can before you turn it, but when you can't sew straight, it's time to adjust your fabric. And we'll just stitch down into the center, out again, and all the way around, and then uh, your heart's finished. I'm going to stop stitching this one here because I have some already finished. All right, now it's time to lay out our design. And like anything else in patchwork, there are many ways that you can do it. What I have chosen here, and this is an easy way to remember, is you have a diagonal row of the orange squares, and from this corner you have a diagonal row of the yellow. So if you choose this design, that, that will keep it straight in your mind, maybe. <laughs> Never know. So here we have this piece, and the second row it would be like this and then down here, and then up here. Uh, we'll start with the yellow, so that the yellow will come diagonally, the orange will come diagonally, and then we have the hearts to put in place. And remember, we have two different heart blocks with the colors reversed. So I have an orange one here on the left, and we'll put this one here. And what we want to do is get the reverse. For instance, the orange is here on this piece, it's here, the yellow is here, and so we'll want the one down here to be the reverse of this. Then it's a matter of sewing them into rows. And let's take a look at how we'll do that. Remember to keep your hearts going in the right direction. We'll just bring this piece here. The seam allowance is towards you, so it's an interlocking seam just like it was for the four patch. So let's go ahead and sew these two together. And we need to put our quarter inch foot back on. And I need to change back to a straight stitch. So I'll just go here, and there I am, back where I want to be. I'll sew onto a starter scrap. A lot of you have written to me and tell, to tell me how much you appreciate that tip on the starter scrap because it does keep all those threads off the back of your pieces. Okay, we'll sew right on to our four patch, interlocking these seams. Just hold them together with your finger. And line up your edges. And we can chain stitch and go to another set right here. And let's just sew these pieces together. Someday I'm going to figure out how much thread I've saved by chain stitching. Instead of having the, the long edge or the tails of the thread each time I sew. Now this one we have nothing to match except the top and the bottom. There's no seam in the middle. Now when you chain sew, you can just cut off one part, cut off this piece, and place it back in position. And let's see, we were right here. We'll line these pieces up, take it over, and we want to chain stitch. Again, we want to interlock the seams. So the top seam will be going away from us. We'll chain from that piece directly on here. Hold them together. And before you know it, our whole quilt is together. And this makes a great tablecloth or a fun wall hanging. We'll just come to the end here, use our thread cutter, and cut our chain apart. And you can see how we're well on our way to getting our quilt together. There are three different rows. Let's open that up. Here we go. And that's the beginning of our quilt. Let's take a look here at the stitching that we have here, the, the actual quilting. It's done in spirals and curves. It's all free motion. And we also have some stippling in here. But once your quilt is finished, then you can put it together and quilt it any way that you would like. And you'll have an interesting wall hanging. Now we can change the size of it by adding one or more borders. 
that quite often is what we do. Now these borders are squared up, which means that we do not miter the corners. Of course, that's optional for you if you want to miter your corners. But I've chosen to use square uh, borders because everything in the quilt is square and it sort of ties the whole thing together. So get two contrasting fabrics out, play with your hearts, put them together, and let's see what kind of designs you can come up with. I hope you've enjoyed this heart project and be sure and join me on my next show when I'll bring you some more quilting ideas. For information on today's main demonstration, call 1-800-248-K. That's 1-800-248-5293. Or write to us at Kay's Quilting Friends, Post Office Box 456, West Branch, Michigan, 48661. Please remember to specify the program number. Kay's Quilting Friends is brought to you in part by Genomi America, Clover Needlecraft, Aunt Light Technology. Our thanks for joining us for this edition of Kay's Quilting Friends. We hope the ideas shared with you in this program will make your quilting more enjoyable. Please join us again on the next Kay's Quilting Friends.